Hello, my friends, and welcome to Studio de Hefri. Do me a favor. Mash the like button. I guess you can't mash it before you know what I'm going to say, huh? And you could hate what I'm going to say. So maybe you don't have to mash the like button or the subscribe button or turn on the notifications to make sure that you see everything I do. You don't have to do any of those things. But on a morning when you get into debates on the tweeter uh, about Cowboys football, I figure, hey, it's a good time to put out a video with your thoughts, eh? And so here we are. Shout out to my weird looking hair. It's called I Got Out of Bed Hair. I want to talk about Micah Parsons today. You guys okay with that? I want to talk about Micah Parsons and the Cowboys game against the Buffalo Bills. Where the Buffalo Bills and James Cook kicked the Cowboys' butt. So the general idea or the thing that I'm I'm seeing on the internet is that Micah Parsons should be playing linebacker because your linebacker core is depleted and uh, you are too small to stop the Buffalo Bills from running the game. That's the general premise, I believe. I don't want to misquote anyone. I'm talking to you, Jay Tuck, who's a wonderful Cowboys content creator and my friend, and I love him. A couple of things. One, uh, Micah Parsons is the best pass rusher on the planet, and so to not have him prioritize rushing the passer would be silly. It would be foolish. Now, here is where I think there could be some nuance to it. Here's what I'll grant you about the Cowboys against the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills came into a game where it was going to be kind of cold and kind of wet, kind of gross and kind of windy. And despite having one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go right at these dudes on the ground. We're going to smash them up. We're going to kick their butts. And they did. And it worked really well. So if you could redo the Bills game, knowing what they were going to do offensively and that they were never going to prioritize passing despite having one of the best quarterbacks on the planet, would you then go into that game and do something differently? Yes. Probably. Micah Parsons probably would have played more than four snaps off the ball. And... Yes, if a team told you before a game started what they were going to do, you would be really good at preparing to stop them, but that's just not how the NFL works. And so when you're going into a game against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, who run the ball well, and they throw the ball really well, you're probably going to prioritize the thing that hurts NFL teams the most, which is when they throw the ball. Now, could the Cowboys struggle with run defense, even if they tried with their personnel to kind of line up against it? They could because they are small. They are, they're missing their best defensive tackle at run stopping in Jonathan Hankins at the moment. They're missing their best run stopping linebacker in Leighton Van Der Esch. They've always liked playing safeties as pseudo linebackers, J. Ron Curse, sometimes Donovan Wilson. Because, again, passing league, and if you can prioritize speed and coverage, that's really, really good until somebody hits you in the mouth over and over and over. And then you react to that individual moment, which we shouldn't. So, yes, if I think if you could turn back time and know that the Bills were going to run it, what, three times for every time they passed it, two and a half times for every time they passed it, you'd absolutely prioritize stopping the run. And even then, I think there is a question. What does Micah Parsons do for you there? Would Micah Parsons be a better run stopper than Marquise Bell or Damone Clark from the linebacker spot? Probably. Would whoever plays the snaps for Parsons at on the edge be a better run defender than Micah Parsons is on the edge? Eh. Because who are you talking about? Dorrance or... Sam Williams or Dante Fowler, none of those guys are dominant run defenders. You're as good having Micah there hoping that he can slip a block and make a play as you are hoping that a guy that weighs 15 pounds more can stack and shed an offensive lineman or whatever. So I just wanted to get out there some Micah Parsons thoughts that they already use him all over the place. There's been three games this year at least where he's played double-digit snaps off the ball. If you're 
if you want the Cowboys because of injuries at linebacker to make Micah a full-time linebacker, I would say you're a crazy person to take away the best guy on the planet at the most important thing on defense in the NFL. If you want to take the best guy at the most important thing away from that so that he could maybe be, probably be, pretty good at tackling running backs from linebacker, no, never. No, 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 never. So that's just a couple of things. One, yes, I think Micah could be a better run defender than either of your existing linebackers on the snaps he plays there. Yes, I do believe that. Is that worth the trade-off of maybe upgrading the run defense at the spot he normally plays? And honestly, you're probably not upgrading the run defense. If you really were just going to play run defense, then you would play Chauncey Golston at Micah Parsons' edge spot and move him to linebacker. But then what happens? The thing is, teams don't tell you before each play if they're going to run or pass. And so if you want your default mode to be, we're built to stop the run, and we're going to intentionally not have the best pass rusher on the planet rushing the passer all the time or most of the time, and you do that on purpose, in a league where teams throw more than they run, that's crazy. That's crazy. Cowboys this year have been average at stopping the run. They got gashed for one week by a team that you fear their quarterback. That's football, man. It happens. Micah Parsons already plays all over. He plays left. He plays right. He plays off the ball. He plays in the A gap. He plays in the B gap. He plays over the offensive tackle. He plays outside the offensive tackle. They already use him in the way that I think people are thinking they want him used. They already do it. If the case we're making this week is that I wish that Micah Parsons played off the ball more because rushing the passer when they're not calling a passing play doesn't matter, sure. But you don't know what play they've called. If you think that the Cowboys got out coached because they didn't respond or react quickly enough or severely enough to a team that established, we're going to run it down your throat. I think that's fair. I think it's totally fair. And that's the game of chess and football. You could have immediately gone, hey, I want an extra down lineman, and I want bigger guy here, and I want this guy there. And you could have done all of those different things. But the likely response to that from the other team is, that's cool. We're one of the five best offenses in football. We have an awesome quarterback. You want us to throw? You got it. Um, but that's football. Football is we don't know how the game ends until it ends. We don't know how the game's going to go until it's going. You don't know what play they've called until they're running it. That's the way it goes. The Cowboys and Bills game, the Bills did a much better job of having a good feel of what you wanted to do and doing something that wasn't necessarily what it looked like you thought they were going to do. And that was Cowboys-Bills. Now we move on to Cowboys-Dolphins. What the Cowboys could really use is Leighton Van Der Esch and Jonathan Hankins. It's not a Micah Parsons go save our run defense at the expense of our ability to rush the passer when we don't know what plays the other team is going to call, and it's a passing league, and rushing the passer is more important than stopping the run. Uh, and that's all. I just want to get that out there. This is my diss track. Is that still the words for it? This is my diss track. Shout out to me. Thanks for kicking it with me, people. Be tuned in to 97.1 The Freak from 2 to 6 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. It's called The Speakeasy, and it's the show I do with Julie Dobbs, Mike Reiner, and Michael Gruber. Although today it'll be with my friend Kevin Gray, who is a badass himself. Make sure you check him out on YouTube. Kevin Gray Sports. I did an interview with him yesterday. All right, much love to the cowboy community. I love you all. Remember, you have no idea what anyone's going through, so be cool to everyone, okay? Be easy.